Um, hello uh, guys, you are welcome back. Um, in this lesson, we want to um, study subjective or onto functions. Um, in other words, what is it? when do we say that a function is onto or subjective? That is uh, that is all we want to look at. Um, we often start with this the function mapping element from set x to set y. I'll call it f. All right, so um, you have elements in here. Let's say you have x1, you have x2, as we've done before, and then map two elements, corresponding elements here. So let's say this guy maps to an element y1, this maps to an element y2. We have already learned that the range of f is this functional values. All right, the set of all, the subset of functional values of f that are in here, y, form the range, right? Now, if, if for every element here in the code domain, for every element here, I can find a corresponding x in x in the domain of f, then, then the function f is said to be onto. Okay? Um, so suppose that I have, I have the same thing, um, x1 maps to y, y1, x2 maps to y2. Suppose that I have an element here, let's call it y3. And y3 doesn't map to anything here. Okay? Then this function will not be onto or subjective because I can find an element which is this for which there is no corresponding x here. So if you can find an element y here such that there is no corresponding element here in x, then you say that f is not uh, subjective or onto. Okay? So that is, that is really the, um, the basic idea of what an onto and subjective functions are. Okay? Uh, which means that for uh, onto functions, functions that are onto, the range must be equal to the codomain. In other words, if I pick any element here in Y, I must find the corresponding element here. So oftentimes, if you are not told, oftentimes assume that F is moving from the space of real numbers to the space of real numbers. So this Y will be the set of all real numbers and X will be the set of all real numbers. All right? Good. So let's use an example to illustrate this. So example, let's determine we want to determine, determine whether, whether the function, let's, uh, let's do something up. Say function f of x is equal to 3x minus 5 is subjective. Okay, subjective or onto the same thing. All right? All right? So, so again, before we, we do that, I'm saying that if the function is onto or subjective, then the range, the range of f of the function must be equal to the codomain. This is important. All right? So if the codomain is the set of all real numbers, I expect that the range of f will be the set of all real numbers. If that is the case, then uh, you can say that the function is uh, is onto. All right. So let's let's finish up with this. We want to determine whether it is onto or not. Well, so the idea um, is very similar to what we did when we we're trying to find the range of the function, right? You can imagine that um, for onto functions, you are concerned about the range, right, in the codomain. Okay. So the idea is very similar. So what you do is that we let you let y be equal to f of x, so that is 3x minus 5, and then you solve for x in terms of y. So um, 3x will be y plus 5. So if you like 3x will be y plus 5. I'm solving for x, divide through by 3. x will be equal to y plus 5 all over 3. Okay? Good. And so once you get here, then you ask the question, if I pick any y, remember? 
if I pick any y, will I get a corresponding x? In this case, it's true. I can pick a positive number, a negative number, a zero. Whichever y I pick, as long as it's real, I can get a corresponding value of x. Okay? So for every, for every, every y, we can, we can get x and in x. Hence, f is subjective. Okay? So, after you do this, you ask the question, for every y that I pick, every y, would I get a corresponding x? And it's true. Okay? And so, one that is true, you conclude that the function is um, subjective or untrue. Okay? Um, let's look at it. Well, you could, you could, you could also do, do this um, alternatively, right? Um, use a, a second method. You could also try to, uh, to prove that the, the rate is equal to the whole domain, right? So if you like, before you do a second example, an alternative way of doing this alternatively, right? You could say, um, can we show? Try, okay, alternative way is to show, show that, show that, uh, range range of f is the same as this whole domain. Alright? This is an alternative way of showing that it is subjective. <clears throat> okay? So, now, um, we got here, right? So, if you were solving, you go through the same steps. x is equal to y plus 5 over 3. Remember, f is from r to r. The set of real numbers to real numbers. So we get here, and what is the domain? You see that the domain, let me shorten it, domain of f is x, x, or, sorry, not the domain. We want the range, okay? So range, range of f is all y such that any real will do, right? Any real number. So the range is a set of all real numbers. Alright? And the code domain is also the set of all real numbers. So the range is equal to the code domain. Alright? Remember, I said that when you're dealing with a function, you assume that it's taking up elements from real to real. Okay, so the code domain is a set of real numbers. So we have shown that from here, after you do this, we have shown that from here the range is a set of all real numbers, and the set of all real numbers is the same as the set in the code domain. Therefore, and uh, the code domain, okay, let's just do this code domain, is also the set of real numbers. Hence, f is onto our subjective. Okay? Whichever way, you still have to uh, arrive at this expression here and make a um, conclusion. Good. So let's, um, let's do a second example. Let's do a second example. So let's take um, a different function. So let's take uh, f of x is equal to, let's do 2 x squared, probably. So let's try. Example 2 determine whether f of x is equal to let's do simple one x squared is onto or subjective. Okay? Same thing, we're just going to use the same approach. Let's, I see we are finding the ring, right? So let y be equal to 2x squared. Uh, I'm solving for x, so I divide through by 2. So x squared is equal to y over 2, right? 
Okay, let's go here. Which means x is plus or minus. So x is equal to plus or minus square root of one. Y over square root square root of two. I'm going to write it in a nice way. Okay. Maybe I should use four. But that's fine. So x is equal to this. It's a number. So once you are here, you ask the question. Alright? Remember, if I pick any y, if I pick any y from here, I might get a corresponding x squared. Alright? This is going here. So for every y, it has to be x, or whichever of x is y. Alright? For all real numbers. Now you notice that if we pick a negative number, if y is less than zero, we can't get any real x. You see that? And so for that matter, the function 2x squared is not suggested. It is not because you can't pick any y, any real number, and get a corresponding x, right? In its domain. So if if y is less than zero, you cannot you cannot have x in the domain. Okay? Hence f is not suggested. Okay, so really that is the basic idea. You want to show that after you've done this, irrespective of the equation, irrespective of the function that you are giving, you go through this and then you end here and end up here and ask the question whether for every y that you pick, you will get an x. If you can't get an x for some y, real, for some real y, then you can conclude that the function is not onto or it's not subject. Okay, good. So I'll end here and then I'll come back with uh, a bijective, what a bijective function is. So I'll be right.